What is up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is gonna to be a bit of a quicker video because I'm knees deep in studying for my surgery shelf exam. This is gonna be my second shelf exam and it got me thinking that I should probably make a video talking about the differences between studying in preclinical versus clinical. Now this isn't gonna be a video that's going like in depth of exactly how I study from like a day-to-day -day perspective, but I just wanted to highlight five differences that I've noticed over the past few months. So the first and probably most obvious one is the amount of time that you have to study in clinicals. Every medical school is different, but in my preclinical curriculum, we were usually in class from like eight to 12, and then the rest of the day was just ours to use however we wanted. Our class was mandatory, so that means we had to be there, um, but a lot of schools do not even have mandatory lectures. So aside from, you know, maybe some small group things that are required, a lot of the lectures you just don't have to go to. So you can be really creative and flexible with your time. That is very different from life on clinical rotations because you're essentially working a full-time job. I started on internal medicine and I was usually there from like seven to four, maybe five o'clock. And currently I'm on surgery and I'm there from 5 a.m. to like 5.30, 6 p.m. every day. So just looking at that time commitment of sort of required activities, you are spending so much more time in the hospital doing stuff other than studying when you're on your clinical rotations. Now that means you have to be more creative and efficient with your studying. When you only have a few hours of free time during your surgery rotation, you have to really pick what is going to be the most helpful and the most high yield material. You also have to get creative and find downtime throughout the day to get some studying in. At least on my surgery rotation, if you have a few hours between cases, you can spend that studying. Um, a lot of the times it's the student's job to go up to the pre-op area and uh, sort of wait with the patient until they roll back to the OR. Um, then you'll like text the resident or the attending, let them know that, hey, we're, we're about to be ready for you. And sometimes you're standing up there for a really long time, so you can use your phone as a resource to get Anki or UWorld on your phone and just do flashcards or practice problems. That's honestly how I get most of my UWorld in, is just doing little sets of five when I'm waiting for patients to roll back. Now, going along with trying to be creative in your studying, uh, the next sort of point that I want to hit is the organization of studying between preclinical and clinical is very different. Um, you know, in preclinical, it's very structured. You know, you have your specific blocks where you're like focusing on one organ system. Um, you know, you know exactly what lectures you're going to have the next day. You know everything that is going to come up in the next eight weeks. But in clinicals, you're on sort of these broader topics of internal medicine, which covers like everything. Same thing, surgery can be really, really broad. You know, there are some specific things like psych or OBGYN. Still with that, you don't know what you're going to see the next day. So sometimes it's a little bit hard to prepare and hard to know exactly what you need to focus on. Similar to being creative, a lot of the study in clinical is more sporadic. Um, sometimes you get home from the hospital and you're just dead and you need to go to sleep, but sometimes you catch a second wind and you can get some studying in. Honestly, one of the best ways to study in clinical is once you see a patient with a certain diagnosis, go home, read up on it more, try to solidify all of the things that you saw with that patient. Um, you know, the only downside with that is if you don't see a certain kind of patient or a certain pathology within your eight weeks, then you might never study it. And that's when the different resources come into play. I found that the resources I have used in preclinical are pretty different from clerkships. In preclinical, I relied heavily on Anki. I would do like eight, nine hundred, sometimes a thousand cards a day. But now in clinicals, I'm doing like one, maybe 200. I watched a lot more videos from third-party resources during preclinical, like Boards and Beyond, Sketchy, Pathoma. And in clerkships, I'm really only using OME or online med ed. Um, it's another like video series that is broken up by the core rotations, like medicine, surgery, neuro, that kind of stuff. Um, and it is very like bare bones, doesn't go into a lot of pathophysiology. It's basically focus just on like clinical presentations and algorithms, um, which is what you really need for when you're in the hospital and, and also on the tests. The biggest split between resources is sort of the focus, you know, with all of the preclinical stuff, it's more geared towards step one, which is a little bit more um, pathophysiology or basic science focused, where aside from maybe some pimp questions by some attendings, you don't have to know that great of detail of the basic science when you're actually taking care of patients. You more need to focus on how different things are gonna present, 
the different diagnostic steps, what's the first second line treatment. So some resources are a lot better at that than others. The other huge difference in resources is I've been doing so many more practice problems. Between UWorld and AMBOSS, pretty much every medical student is going to use one of those two resources. Um, I personally use UWorld mostly. I do have the like sort of base AMBOSS um, subscription where it gives you 50 questions a month. So I also try to do those, but I don't have access to the full question bank. And basically the idea with that is things are once again broken up by different rotation and you're supposed to try your best to get through all of the questions in that particular subject. It's easier said than done. Um, internal medicine, I think, has almost 1,200 questions. So having to do that in eight weeks is a grind, but um, it really is pretty much essential to do well on the shelf exam. That sort of brings me into my fourth point of the difference between NBME exams and in-house exams. So some schools will just use old NBME questions to make their tests to sort of prepare their students for the shelf exams and the step exams. Um, my school doesn't do that. The professors write their own questions. So they, you know, try to use the same sort of clinical vignette style, but you can definitely tell that there's differences in the kinds of questions that they ask. Um, so I think that was the biggest transition was l sort of trying to forget how to answer the in-house exams that I was used to doing for a year and a half and start to learn the new style of the NBME. Probably the biggest difference in that is the speed at which you have to do questions. Um, on the shelf exams and the step exams, I'm pretty sure you have pretty much a minute and a half to answer every question, which, you know, for some people, it seems like it might be a lot of time, but these questions, it's not like you're just reading one sentence and then looking at the answer choices. It's usually a paragraph, sometimes two paragraphs, along with some labs and then a question right at the end. So even just reading and like interpreting the labs can take you probably a minute. So then you have 30 seconds to actually understand what's going on and think about the answer choices. So it took a while to sort of train myself to get through questions that fast. Um, for my in-house exams, we would have like four, four and a half hours to answer 120 questions versus on the shelf exam, it's like two hours 45 for 110. So it was a lot faster. And like I said, the prompts themselves are much longer for the NBME. And that's why practice questions are so important because you have to be able to recognize the pathophysiology or medication or whatever as fast as you can. So you can actually then take like the second step of answering the question because it's very rarely like, oh, here's this situation. What does this person have? It's always like a second or third order question where you need to know what they have then you need to know what medication they might have been given for it. And then the question is like, what is the side effect of it? So the best way to get good at doing that is just repetition and pattern recognition. And the final thing I'll touch on that uh, I've noticed throughout my few months of rotation is there are sometimes very big differences between real life and the textbook or shelf exam answer. Now you don't really run into this a lot in preclinical because you're just focused on like the pathophysiology. There's not a lot of like clinical management or decision making or whatever. Um, you know, my, my school did have a little bit of that, but it's definitely not like it is now. And you know, all you're worried about is studying for the test. Um, we did have a little bit of clinical experience, but not enough to notice the differences between you know, real life and the textbook. You know, there have been so many times on our rotations where a attending will specifically say like, you know, this is going to be the answer on the test. However, in real life, I've never done this. It usually comes with different steps in like the algorithm for a diagnosis or, you know, triaging a patient. One example I remember is we were having a, a trauma lecture by one of the trauma surgeons and he was like, you know, this is sort of what you do when a trauma comes in. You you know, do your ABCs, then you'll do a fast exam, which is an ultrasound of like the abdomen and chest. And the textbook answer for sort of one of those tree branches is to do a diagnostic peritoneal lavage, which you're basically taking a needle and uh, aspirating some fluid from the abdomen. He was like, in my 20 years of practice, I've never seen anyone do that, but it is going to be the answer on your test. So that is another struggle with clinicals is trying to keep straight 
what the test answer is versus what the real life answer is because you know if an attending asks you a question in the OR or whatever you want to make sure you're saying the real life answer and not the textbook one. Alright, well that is going to do it for today's video. Like, this was not to go in depth into my study routines, I'm going to cover that in a separate video once I've got a few more shelf exams under my belt. So be sure to check back if you're interested on the topic. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.